Hi, we're the Metalloids. I'm Julia. I'm Caroline. Mercedes. I'm Michelle. And this is Marco. And today we're going to be making baked macaroni and cheese. It's true. So first we're going to discuss heat transfers. There are three ways that heat can be transferred, conduction, convection, and radiation. Conduction is the transfer of energy through vibrating particles that are touching. Convection is the transfer of energy through the movement of liquid or gas. And radiation is the transfer of energy through electromagnetic waves. Today we're cooking baked macaroni and cheese which has many energy transfers. First we turn on the gas stove and place a pot in direct contact with the burner. Because of this, the heat energy causes the particles to move faster and conduct energy into the contents of the pot through conduction. When you're cooking pasta, you may want to use a wooden spoon as opposed to a metal spoon because a wooden spoon is an insulator or it transfers energy slowly, while a metal spoon is a conductor or it transfers energy fast and will be really hot to the touch. Um, Next, we're placing the mac and cheese in the convection oven. This transfers heat through convection because there's a fan in the back moving the particles throughout the oven, causing heat energy to spread. To start making the macaroni and cheese, you need to first boil the water. So here we have water that is working towards boiling. I'm going to discuss the phase change of water. The phase change of water can be visualized by a heating curve, which we have right here. Sorry. While the pressure stays at a constant of 1 atm, energy goes into the system in the form of heat. This is how the phase change takes place. This happens through the breaking of intermolecular forces, which, in the case of water, is a hydrogen bond. At 0 degrees Celsius, H2O is an ice and liquid mixture, but also at this temperature, the heating curve plateaus. The heat energy remains constant as the energy is going towards the breaking of the hydrogen intermolecular forces. After the H2O is entirely liquid, the temperature continues to increase up to 100 degrees Celsius where vaporization occurs. Once again, the heating curve plateaus as all the heat energy is going towards breaking the intermolecular forces. After all the intermolecular forces are broken, the H2O turns into liquid vapor. And this is the optimal temperature in which to pour in the macaroni. So here is the boiling, almost, pot of water. Phase change. So now the phase change of water is complete and all the hydrogen bond forces have been successfully broken. So now we pour in the noodles into the, uh, what's it called, water. Next we need to stir the noodles to ensure all of them are cooked evenly. To do this we're using a wooden spoon because it is an insulator so our hands will not get too Warm. The specific heat capacity of a substance is the amount of heat energy it takes to raise one gram of the substance to one degree Celsius. For cooking, it is not only important to know how to cook the food, but also what to cook it in. For us to bake the macaroni and cheese, first we had to boil the noodles in hot water. Um, for us to boil the water, we used a metal pot. As the stove top heated up the pot, the heat spread quickly because the specific heat capacity is lower which means that it doesn't take as much heat energy to heat it up. Um, to actually bake the macaroni and cheese, we used a glass container. The specific heat capacity of glass is 0.84 joules divided by grams times degrees Celsius. The container has a higher heat capacity than the metal, which will allow for it to heat up slowly in the oven and for all the food. Next, we put the mac and cheese in the oven, where it has been preheated to 450 degrees. In solid form, cheese has tiny droplets of fat suspended in water. This is held in place by interleaved proteins. When cheese melts, the oil and water tend to separate, which creates an unwanted mixture where the oil is separated from the other parts of the cheese, which is not great. In order to obtain proper sauce consistency, we created a more nate type sauce, which consists of butter, flour, and milk. Another way this problem could have been solved is by adding a small amount of sodium phosphate or citrate. James O. Kraft, his name may sound familiar, invented this idea in order to create shelf-stable cheese which was able to be stored. This prevents the cheese from separating into different parts. The flour, butter, and com 
and milk combined with the cheese, which forms attachments between fat and water molecules. This makes sure the cheese is smoothed without clumps, which is what you would want in mac and cheese. And that's how you make baked mac and cheese! Mac and cheese, mac mac and cheese. Uh, can I have some please? Mac and cheese, macaroni and cheese. Please, baby, please. Mac and cheese, mac mac and cheese. Uh, can I have some please? Mac and cheese, macaroni and cheese. Uh, please, baby, please.